In this video, we're going to go over how to create a family that has an angle parameter controlling it so that I can flex the angle within the project without you know, having to create a new family. In this example, we're going to create um, like a flashing element for a roof ridge. I hardly ever create anything for structures, so I thought I'd do something a little different. This could also be used for doors or you know, really anything that you want to control the angle on. Um, for doors, it's probably going to be a little bit different, you know, how you set this up, but the concept is the same. So I'm going to start with a line-based generic model family. Once I'm in here, I can change this to pretty much any type of param you know, of category that I want. So I could change it to structural stiffeners or framing or, you know, anything. And you'll want to do that if you decide to create. Um, subcategories. You'll want to switch it before you start doing that. Okay, so I'm going to assume that I'm going to build this as a sweep. And I've already got my length parameter controlled. I need to build the profile of this sweep from the elevation. And we could do this with reference planes, but in order to get this to flex right, we kind of need to do it in the sketch mode, which is kind of against the rules that I generally try and stick to. So we're going to go in and we're going to start our sweep. We're going to create our path. And I'm going to pick. And I'll verify that it's locked to this location. Now while I'm in here, I do want to flex it to make sure that this line stretches with the parameter. So we'll go ahead and do that from here. As long as I don't get any warnings, I'm good to go. I'm going to finish the path. And then I'm going to go and edit the profile. So I need to go to one of the elevations. It doesn't matter which one. And from here, I'm going to start drawing you know, the reference sketch lines and then dimension and uh, tie parameters to those. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my lines. And we always want to snap to the intersection. So type in SI to snap to the intersection. Or you can just change your snaps. Now it doesn't matter what the angle or the length of this is at this point, so just go ahead and draw it. And I'm going to mirror this so that I know that they're the same. I'm going to zoom in here a bit, and then we're going to dimension these. I'm going to dimension the angle first, and I want to make sure I grab the reference plane, not that level. So I used my tab key. Same thing over here. Now as long as you mirrored these, we can select both of these and apply the parameter at the same time. If one's different than the other, you may end up with a problem. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to control and select these. I'm going to add a parameter. We'll call this angle. And it's probably going to be instance based, so I'll change that. Now you'll notice these flipped. Don't worry about that. It, it'll still function as it should. But we want to test this right away. We don't want to, you know, wait until we're farther down the road. And we can do this while we're in sketch mode. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to change the angle. Okay, so both of them are working the way they should. So we'll proceed. Now I'm going to hide these two um, dimensions just to kind of get them out of my way. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension the length of these items. So if I just select it and click that dimension symbol, it'll create that dimension for me. I'm going to move it out of the way for now. Same thing over here. And we'll just move it. And since they're both the same, same process, we're going to tie a parameter to that. And we'll call it leg length. And I do want that type base, so I'm going to leave it that way. Now let's go ahead and unhide these so I can see everything, because we're going to flex both. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to flex the leg length and the angle. And it could be any value, I'm just typing in random numbers. So we want to make sure that we don't get any warnings and that everything's working as it should. Okay. So now, same thing, I'm going to go hide these again, mostly because they're in my way. I can't see the line very well. And what I'm going to do now is finish drawing my profile. 
So I'm going to draw my end lines and make sure that you're perpendicular and it doesn't matter what length because we're going to trim this. And same thing on this side. And then I'm going to use my pick tool. I want to make sure lock is selected before I type in my offset. Okay, so I've set it to an eighth of an inch and then we'll zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see better. And whichever side I want to offset to, in this case I want to offset to the underside. And then we're going to trim. So let's zoom in again. And trim the other side. Okay. Now I want to dimension the thickness. So for some reason if we want to be able to control the thickness, um, we'll add a parameter. If not, then we'll just dimension and lock these. So I'm going to assume that we want to you know, control the thickness of this. So I'm going to dimension both of these. And then again, I can select both of them at the same time and add a parameter. So we'll call this thickness. And again, whether it's instance or type, I'm going to assume it's type. And one more time, we're going to flex. And I'm going to change all of these parameters. Because sometimes when you add a new variable, things break. So we want to check it while we're in sketch mode because it's easier to see where it breaks. So everything's good. So we'll say OK. I am going to assign a material to this. And I'll call it flashing material for lack of a better word. Assigning this parameter allows us to change this in the project. So we'll say OK. And finish. And finish. And then I want to make sure that once I'm outside of the family, you know, sketch mode, that it's still going to do what I'm expecting. So let's go ahead and change these variables. And we'll make this one. I'll make this, I don't know, one inch. Okay, so everything's working. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but anything that says default, you'll automatically know by looking at it that this is an instance-based parameter. If it does not say default behind it, then it's type-based. So if I want to create new family types, I'm going to do that from here. So we'll say that um, this is 6-inch flashing 1 8 inch thick or however you want to name it but that's just an example so then what you want to do is you want to make sure this information matches that so we'll say 6 inches and 1 8 and apply now the angle doesn't matter because it's going to be controlled in the project so you know, whatever we need to do with that. You can create additional types in here or you can wait and do that in the family. So once that's in here, we're going to take this into a test project. So I'm going to do a save as, which you should have done earlier. I was not doing what I should have. So we'll call this um, group flashing. And you'll see that I've done other ones before this. Okay, and once this is done saving, I am going to start a new test project. So with your template, and then I'm going to load that family so we can switch back. And we'll load it into the project. And we want to place it on a work plane. And then I'm just going to sketch it. And it's, I'm getting a warning down here, and that's just telling me that it's not visible from where I'm at. So let's take a look at one of my elevations to see if it came in okay. Let's change the detail level. Okay, I still can't see it from here, so let's go to a 3D view and find out where it's at. So. It's associated to level one. It's at a zero offset. It's probably just too small for me to see without zooming in. Um, 
but it is functioning. I do have the ability to change its length, its angle, and it doesn't break. So once you get it working the way it should inside of your project, then you can go ahead and use it, you know, in your actual project. So once it's working in your test project and you've got all the kinks worked out, then you can take it into your working project and go from there. Now, as I said before, if I wanted to change this family type, which I did not do prior to bringing it in here, if you decide that you want this to be, you know, a structural member of some sort, just come in here and change it to whatever it is you want it. I'll change it to structural framing for now. Um, and then when you load it into the project, it would be um, based off of a structural framing member. So if we go back to my plan view and we go to the home tab, or actually the structure tab, and beam, and let's change it this way to my roof flashing. And again, the same visibility issue. Um, but we can go from there. So either way, whether you want it as a generic model, which I would not recommend that you leave it that way because it, we cannot schedule that item, or as a structural member, which we can. So hopefully that was helpful.